good business to talk to the patients. It's good business to turn healthcare upside down. And it would be very good business to read what the rest of the industry in the world has done when they have started to think about how do we do our service design for our patients. One of the best examples is in the UK, the IAPT dot uh, something, NHS dot org something, but IAPT, increased access to psychological treatment. One million patients in treatment, all patients giving data back after each session online, finding the clinics that do not match the quality very early on, having teams visit those, see that they increase their quality, and by all means having online data coming back from, uh, directly from the patients. Uh, six years ago I was part of a team that started an organization called ICHOM. Uh, ICHOM is uh, International Consortium for Health Outcome Measurements. The idea is to find data sets where outcome measures that matters to patients are measured, both as direct report from the patient but also observations from the clinic. Mash them together and publish them for free use in healthcare for anybody who cares to, uh, to use them. We have now 600 care organizations that use part of these data sets. They're free for use. The idea is to provide automatic online measurement continuously so patient can get a real choice. So where are we heading in healthcare? We're heading for a patient-centric view uh, with everything that we do, and, but we have a problem. We have the EMRs, the electronic medical records that essentially look backwards. They're there for legal reasons to protect the pro health professional, the doctor. They're not there to plan the care and they actually, most of them, don't even provide a key how can we get patient reported data in together with the rest of the data set. When we started, we, uh, we found the variation in results to be a big problem. It's been a big problem within oncology. Oncology has ab absolutely, across the years, been, uh, uh, been in the forefront. But as soon as you combine uh, ca cancer together with, uh, with surgery, you end up with large variations. These are the types of variations that we found, uh, you know, with 20 fold uh, variation in mortality in, in certain, uh, certain disorders. Not having patient reported data, not having outcome data with proper quality will delay the drive for quality. We have, we have examples where we buy transparency in data for in, in heart disease, for instance. We're able to get 60 hospitals in Sweden within two years to all of them, and I mean all of them, have uh, all of them were able to abide to the European um, uh, guidelines. With the worst hospitals decreasing their mortality rate with 50% in 18 months. That's the type of uh, force we have. We have good people in healthcare, but they are underinformed. We have good patients out there, but they are under-informed. So whenever we do these types of, of, uh, of uh, instigate these types of systems, there, is, there are two things we need to do. We need to measure wide enough, but we need to give something back. If we expect our patients to be our partners in healthcare, we need to give the data back to them. That's really the biggest driver to get patient reported outcome data into healthcare. That is by giving back the distilled uh, uh, results and doing it, doing it in a transparent way. When we set these quality measures together, uh, we'll put, uh, uh, when we do that, we end up with working groups, with representatives from all over the world, 
We try to be on both parts of the Atlantic and also in Asia. And we always bring in patient organizations and patient representatives with the set idea that unless we, ha we, we provide data that is relevant to the patient category at hand, we will never be able to get the quality of healthcare service that's necessary. One example, Swedish uh, prostate cancer registry only measured survival. The German measured survival, um, uh, leakage after a year, and sexual function. When we started to measure, and they had numbers like, you know, seven for uh, uh, seven and ten percent in Germany, and we started to measure in Sweden, it was 50 and 75 percent. Took us three years in Sweden to push down so it was in the ballpark of where it should be. But it hadn't been measured. And therefore, the strong signal of patient quality had not reached healthcare in a proper way. Uh, let's skip that one. The, uh, the, this one is better. One of the reasons to why we have a difficulty in driving healthcare is that we have one money circle and we have one knowledge circle, and they do not, uh, they are not combined. The underlying uh, idea with, uh, with the ITROM initiative is that we provide the same information to everybody in the system, including patient reported outcome. Turns out that drives everybody's sense of direction in a proper way. It drives the payers, they stop paying for visits, they stop paying for technology, they pay for outcome. It drives the profession that start asking what can we do in order to improve the outcomes. And it, uh, it also uh, drives the hospital organization, the care organizations, and the collaboration between open care and in care, which is today quite difficult in some countries. Uh, Holland is leading, or the Netherlands are leading the way by enforcing prom collections in order to uh, drive the, the reform of their payment, payment system. Uh, Belgium is coming second and uh, we envy those guys in Sweden because we are, we are very well organized in Sweden also when we do the wrong things. This is the next problem for people in oncology. And this is the Barnett study in Lancet 2012. You guys are working on uh, producing what we call oncological survivors. That is a lot of people. Oncological su survivors will have other diagnoses. The ability to also bring in to uh, these patients the ability to have a collective view from healthcare is, is uh, the next scientific object that we really need to discuss when we discuss clinical quality. I'm going to stop here and just with, uh, with one last slide here, this one. This is typically what you can do when you, when you work with PROMS. This is uh, a, an example from rheumatology. This is all of Sweden's patients, the level of inflammation, the red stipple line. Demonstrating by systematic work, we can get all of the patient's average down to a level in inflammation level where there is no cartilage destruction. So, you know, everything we saw in our, uh, in our medical uh, textbooks when we, did, when we went to med school with these hands, etc., they don't exist anymore. The blue line <coughs> is a county in Sweden that had no tradition in rheumatology, so everybody was doing it. And then they had one visit from a very trained rheumatologist, I think it was in January 2009. They talked about this, demonstrated how it was done, they started to collect data, and from that day on, they have been better than the, all of the Swedish average. That's how you drive online registries with good data that drives behavior. And all of it can, must be a combination of a broad prompt out, uh, prom set 
and also clinical observation. But this was uh, this is just a sort of a, one of the key observations. There are similar observations done, for instance, in in uh, child, uh, childhood leukemia and, uh, and and some others where we have seen very very good results by providing this good data in, in a timely fashion to the profession. People in healthcare are good people, but they are underinformed. So let's inform them better. Thank you. Thank you.